Welcome to Electra Online and to get a better understanding of Gauss's law for magnetism we're going to do a second example in this case the magnetic field is created by a current so let's say we have a wire right here that carries a current I and therefore there will be a magnetic field that exists around the wire and using our right hand rule we can imagine our thumb is in the direction of the current and our fingers will curl around the thumb in the direction of the magnetic field so we have a magnetic field that exists around the wire like that and the farther out you go the, we the weaker the field the closer you get the stronger the field and the equation that indicates the strength of the magnetic field is equal to mu sub naught times the current the bigger the current the bigger the magnetic field divided by two times a a being the distance away from the wire the greater the distance the weaker the current so now we're trying to figure out how the the differential form of the gauss's law for magnetism equates to the uh, integral form of the Gauss's law for magnetism. And here again, what we're doing is what we're, if we take the integral form, we can say that it's simply equal to uh, the strength of the B field, okay, that would be determined by this, times the area, and uh, you can see that because of the symmetry, if the B field goes through the surface like this, the same amount of B field versus area will travel in the back of the box as come, come out the front of the box, and you see that the net result is that we have so much flux going in, so much flux come out, and so therefore the integral of that should have, would, would be zero. Because in this case, the B field is, is, is in the opposite direction to the um, vector of the surface, and on the other side, it's in the same direction, so the two sides will simply cancel each other out, and you end up with a zero on the integral form. But how does that compare to the, di to the differential form? Well, one way to do it is simply take the divergence in circle coordinates, no, in this case we're in cylindrical coordinates, in cylindrical coordinates because you know you can think of this as a cylinder in the B field forming a cylinder around the current right here, around the wire, the divergence is equal to this equation right here. Now notice that there's no variation in angle, so no matter in which direction you face, the B field will always be the same, the only thing that matters is the distance from the wire, and also it doesn't matter if you're over here, 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 or here, or down here, as long as the wire is long enough, there's no dependency on the Z direction, there's no dependency on angle, so those last two portions of the equation, they become equal to zero, because you take the derivative of that, since they're constant, you get zero. So all we have to do is take the derivative of this. So now, instead of using r, we're going to use the variable a, a being the distance from the wire, and so this becomes 1 over a times a partial derivative uh, with respect to a of a times this quantity right here, which is mu sub naught times i divided by 2a. Now notice in this case, the a's cancel out, and all we're doing now is take the derivative with respect to a of a constant, and of course, take the derivative of constant is equal to zero, so this whole thing becomes equal to zero, which is what is indicated by the divergence here. The divergence of B field equals zero, which proves out when we actually do the divergence, we then realize, oh, that means the divergence is zero, which means there's no point source causing a magnetic field to exist. It's the same everywhere as a function of radius around the wire. Another way of looking at the divergence, you could say, well, that's equal. The divergence of B is equal to the magnetic flux coming out of the, so that's magnetic flux coming out of the cube minus the magnetic flux going into the cube divided by the volume of the cube. And so in the same way, oh, that should say volume, there we go. And so in the same way, we can say that the same amount of flux comes into the cube as leaves the cube, and therefore the net flux in the cube is zero, and so therefore we can say that the divergence of the B field, the divergence of the magnetic field, also equals zero. So, a couple of quick examples where you can see that there's a perfect match between the differential form of Gauss's law for magnetism and the integral form for Gauss's law for magnetism. And there you go, hopefully that makes it clear. And now we'll go and take a look at the other two forms of Maxwell's equation in differential form that deals with the curl of the E field or the electric field and the curl of the magnetic field. So come back if you're interested and see how we make some understanding of that.